Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here with an Impreza RS cluster here, and below me I have a few others laid out, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, you can probably hear the whirring of my oscilloscope in the background, and I'm here to show you some pretty cool stuff. So I posted a video before, a few videos before, showing you guys some cluster flashing stuff I was doing. And here I want to show you kind of how it all works and what everything does. Um, first we can start off by looking at the clusters we have here. Uh, here is the typical uh, UK Impreza cluster. Um, it's completely together. I haven't touched it. It's been completely um, stock. It's never changed. It's been my control uh, test unit. Um, the only problem are is that that odometer bleeds right there, but otherwise it's completely functional, and we can see that by turning this on, everything displays, everything looks good. Over here we have a uh, JDM STI GC cluster kind of torn apart. Um, functionally, everything else works. Um, you can see the lights on, the mileage is displaying, everything's good here. Um, we are going to uh, look at what this does with the stock ROM and with the ROM that I have flashed to make it convert into miles per hour. Next I want to show you guys what equipment I'm using and what it does so you can understand how I'm using it to test things. Let's look at it. Right here we have our DC power supply. It's, uh, it's from China. Displays voltage and a lot of current. The function of the power supply is to give power to the clusters to, to replicate a 12 volt battery in the car. Um, and that's what it does. Up here we have a WaveTech 187 function generator. Basically what this does uh, for our purpose is output a square wave just like the vehicle speed sensor does inside the car. Uh, we can turn it on here and we can see that we can turn this dial up and down to choose our frequency. Our multiplier is at 100 so this is a factor of 100 so right here would be 100 hertz, that's 200 hertz, and so on. Below the wave generator, we have the Tektronix 2246 oscilloscope. Uh, this just lets you kind of see the output of the wave tech, uh, which I can demonstrate right here. We'll turn it on. Um, right now, it's at 0.2 volts per dividend, and the signal is apparently not amazing. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, here is what we get when we turn on our oscilloscope. And as we can see, we can see the square wave being generated by the wave tech right here. So that's at about 150 hertz. This is what the vehicle speed sensor outputs from a, from a car. The last piece of equipment is the Fluke 179 multimeter. Right now it's set to measure frequency, as we can see right here. Um, as I said before, we're running at 150 or so hertz. Uh, the oscilloscope makes it look like that, and this just gives me a digital output, so I'm not just trusting on the analog input stick of a WaveTech. So now I have a brief overview of what test equipment I've been using. I want to show you what it does to the clusters and what the clusters do when the cows are changed inside the memory chip. Before we look at how the clusters act, it's important to know how the sensor works. The sensor works by outputting a square wave that is four pulses per revolution of the output shaft in the transmission. I've put a picture of the description of the sensor from the official Subaru service manual for a version 5 and 6 STI. Our waveform generator emulates the sensor's output. It also is important to note that the speed displayed is directly related to the frequency output of the speed sensor, as it's shown in the graphs displayed. All right, we have everything up and running. We're pulsing both of our unmodified clusters at 69.5 hertz. Uh, if we look down here at the UK cluster, it's showing roughly 60, uh, 64, 63 uh, miles per hour. And then if we look over here at the uh, JDM cluster, it's reading about 100 kilometers per hour. Um, it's important to note that these are actually reading the same speed. Uh, because about 62 miles per hour is about 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, and this kind of proves and shows good proof of concept that the same frequency is the same speed. Um, therefore, if we were to you know, transfer this to miles per hour internally, the, uh, the input frequency needs to be consistent with the output speed. All right, now we're going to swap out the stock chip with my own personal modified chip on the JDM cluster here. Um, pretty easy to do so because I have it socketed. Just pull this guy out. Alright, then we put this guy in. Boom, there we have it. So let's put this back on and we'll power it up. Alright, we have everything plugged back in. And as you can kind of tell here on the JDM clusters, there's been a change of mileage. 
uh, which is a good indicator of the change of ROM as the odometer also stores the data on the same chip as the scalers for speed. Um, if we look here, we'll have everything off right now, but we'll turn it back on and we're pulsing at the exact same frequency we were before, which as you can see here is about 69.5 hertz. All right, so we'll look back down here at the UK cluster. Uh, again, still reading the same 63, 64, whatever miles per hour. Now, if we go back over to the JDM cluster, we see that it is reading about 62 miles per hour. So very, very similar to the JDM cluster. Um, this kind of shows that the ROM is consistent with the US or the UK cluster um, and that the input frequency is still the same and that the only thing that's changed is the displayed speed. Uh, it's very, very important to know that that's good uh, because that means your, your transmission lines of the frequency of the VSS have not been altered. Um, I forgot to add this into the video uh, before, so now I'm back on my computer with a wiring diagram pulled up. Um, the reason why it's very important to notice that your transmission lines for the vehicle speed sensor aren't uh, disturbed is because of this. Uh, right here in the diagram, we have the vehicle speed sensor here. Uh, it has three wires, as it does for all 99 to 07 uh, Imprezas and pretty much all Subarus. Um, right here, we have just the power line. This just gives power to everything. Um, as you can see here goes the fuse box, it's the power supply. Um, and then if I change my color here, we have just a ground right here. This just goes to ground. Uh, all that stuff just grounds out. Um, then the important line, which I'll do in orange, is right here. Um, oops, I'm sorry, right here. Uh, this is the one that goes to both the cluster, which displays for your speedo and tachometer. Uh, and it also goes over here, if we see, down into the ECU. Um, engine control unit right there. Uh, and that's important because we don't really know what the ECU does with this signal. Um, and it, I think it's a very passive thing. And if you modulate um, this signal here with, you know, some sort of modifier, like people wire into the speed sensor and all that, um, you're modulating the ECU um, signal as well, which can lead to not, not good things. Um, the ECU uses speed for a lot of load calculations. Um, as well as uh, gearing calculations uh, for, you know, what fuel trims and what to use. Uh, again, like I said, not sure on the exact specifics of that. Uh, however, it's important that we don't mess with it because we don't want to mess with it when we're just trying to display speed. Um, by just flashing the cluster, uh, we limit our... Um, let me pick a color here, brown here. We limit our, our, our change in frequency... Uh, and change in transmission signal to just here, um, and, and that doesn't affect the ECU at all, uh, at all. So it, this is the proper way to do it. This is how you do it in an engineering world, and it's really remarkable that um, a lot of other people don't really realize that. So that's kind of why I mentioned that it was important to to not mess with the transmission lines of that. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of it. So there you guys kind of have it. I hope that kind of shows you. Uh, what I've been doing, what equipment I'm using, um, kind of how the speed sensor in the car works, how clusters work, and how displayed output works. Um, and right in front of me, I can see it right here. You guys can't yet. I have another special kind of surprise, which I'm going to show you right now. So as I mentioned before, the vehicle speed sensor is the same for all 99 to like 07 Subarus. Uh, well, here I have a version 7 STI cluster. And uh, as you may be able to tell from the little badging here, uh, it's a little different than just the stock one. Um, I also still have my UK one hooked up. So, you know, let's uh, let's increase the speed on this UK one and see see what we can get. So, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's give it about 100 and, 140 miles per hour. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. So, output of 154, you know, hertz. And uh, let's, yeah, maybe it's a little less. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. All right. So let's head on over here to the uh, JDM cluster, and yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty close. Yeah, let's crank this one up to 160. That's about right, right? And what about this guy? Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. So uh, I've modified the uh, this version 7 STI cluster to read miles per hour. As you can see, the odometer is counting up too, and we can also change it to the other one. 
B. Let's reset B. There we go, that's at zero. That one still reads right. Yeah. Oh. And it reads in degrees Fahrenheit instead of degrees Celsius. That's kind of cool. <laughs> um, that's all I got for right now, guys. Uh, I am accepting clusters uh, to be flashed. Um, I can put details for the flashing service I'm offering below. Um, and until next time, whoa, I will, uh, I will see you guys later.